Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is Get Wisdom and Get Understanding. Beloved family, our text says, You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Psalm 139. At some point in our lives, we will have to reflect. Look back to see who has been there for us and who hasn't. What has worked in the past and what hasn't? What mistakes have we made and how can we learn from them? If we don't get understanding from the knowledge we have experienced in the past, then we become fools walking back into the same situations that God brought us out of. The scripture says, get wisdom, but in all thy getting, get understanding, though it cost you everything. David went through a lot to gain understanding. He fought a bear and lion and also the champion of Gath, a giant in the land. I mean, the king attempted murder several times against David, trying to pin him against the wall. His son Absalom took all ten of his royal concubines in the palace when he took the throne and had David his father on the run. He went from commander-in-chief to commanding 400 men who were all either in trouble, in debt, or in discontentment. So we see these experiences taught David about God. And this is who our reflection should be on. God our Father, the one who created us. David understood that God knows him. Where he lives, where he gets up and lies down. His going and coming and all his ways. And you don't think the all-knowing God knows everything about you too? Every detail about your life. David says he hemmed me in the back and the front. Ah, uh -huh. when we step out of line, God is the one who hems us up. Such knowledge, the text says, is too wonderful for me. Too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light became night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. Oh, that's a good word. David first comes to the understanding that God is all-knowing. The erudite would say omniscient. But now David starts to reflect not only on the all-knowing quality of God, but that he is everywhere or omnipresent. The text says, you were even in my mother's womb, knitting me together. Have you ever seen knitting before? It can become very detailed and intricate. God took his time creating you. You are no accident. God purposed to have you for this time and for this season and for the work that he has to complete in you. Philippians 1.6 so now, when you wonder or ask if God knows what you've been through or what happened to you back in your childhood, even though you are an adult now, know that he has been there before you took your first breath, before the obstetrician put his hands on you at birth. David says, your hands, God, were on me in the womb. Wow. And he still has his hands on you, fam. He never took it off, for he has the whole world in his hands. Psalm 24, 1. 
David says, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. God, I agree with King David. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. David says, my knowledge of you is far beyond what I could know. Listen to this family. Even though David said, you knit me in my mother's womb, he also says, my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, in the depths of the earth. And now he gives the explanation, your eyes saw my unformed body. David is saying, you saw me as spirit long before you formed my body in the womb. David concludes his psalm or song of praise and adoration to his all-knowing, all-present, all-loving, all-caring, and all-creating God. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you, God, would slay the wicked. Oh, y'all know David has to submit his entire petition to God, and this includes his enemies. After all, he is a warrior king who knows his limitations and that God fights all of his battles. Away from me, you who are bloodthirsty, David says. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name, God. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and abhor those who are in rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Even though David has reflected on the wonderful thoughts and works of God, he still asks of God what you and I should ask during times of reflection to gain understanding. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Much love.